Hello, I've got a great video for you today. Today we're going to be taking a look at the white edition and more specifically the newest edition of the Arctic P12 Max. It's now got a fluid dynamic bearing. The previous iteration had a dual ball bearing, so we're expecting it to be significantly better, particularly at lower RPMs in terms of noise level. So let's get right into it. So first up, a little bit of comparison between the new white fluid dynamic bearing and the original ball bearing. Basically the exact same specs, air speed, CFM, and even the noise level is expected to be very similar. However, I did do the calculation. Uh, Arctic likes to do theirs in sewn, and it's expected to be quite a bit quieter. We're gonna have to check it out in the data to see how it actually does. So first up is the case simulation test. What size case do you actually plan on buying? The each of these inch marks at the bottom are representative of the distance between the front of the case, so where that front fan is placed, and your CPU air cooler, so that front to back airflow design. And then these uh, like 120 is an estimation of what what size fans would be sitting inside the case uh, that is kind of coordinated with uh, that inch mark. So at six inches, 120, eight inches, nine inches, 220s, 11 inches, 320s, and 14.5 inches, 340s. And if you've used this with 140 millimeter class fans, you know it sits somewhere in between in the middle. And the six mark is also represented by a short throw distance. That would be air, uh, bottom of the case, blowing air up towards your GPU. So you'd be using that six inch mark. If you're looking at small form factor cases, I recommend using data sets from CFM or the uh, airflow through the CPU or cooler because small form factor cases tend to be more they, more constrained, so you need more pressure-oriented fans, and those tests have some background pressure because the fan is having to push a little bit harder through the device that I'm measuring, so um, it, it gives you a close result for effectiveness for that type of case. Anyways, noise alarmist results, distance for the fan versus air speed, air distance on the bottom axis, uh, air speed on the vertical axis, and we have my control fan here with these triangles, and the control fan is three parts A12X5 to one part A14, blended together to create a composite 130 millimeter class fan. The blue squares are represented by the new FDB version, and the circles are represented by the P12 Max dual ball bearing. And then the little X mark is for the original P12. Um, I find Arctic has a little bit of inconsistency from one fan to the next, so I don't know if I got a good sample, a mid sample, or a bad sample for any of these fans. So the data kind of is what it is, and that's one of the improvements that I would like to do with this channel as it grows, is to have multiples of each fan to do a larger sample set. In other words, have like five of each fan so that I can then average the results and give you the best data possible, but that is future growth. So comparing with what I have in noise normalist results, we see that the P12 original is the best in this scenario. Uh, then the control, and then we have the new P12 Max FDB with the P12 Max dual ball ring sitting well towards the bottom. If we crank things up to 100% PW fan signaling, the dual ball bearing is now the best. And if we pay attention to the noise levels, it is actually quieter than the fluid dynamic bearing. So go figure. Um, air speeds are fairly similar, but again, the dual ball bearing just ended up being more effective. I don't know if they tweaked something that I just couldn't notice in the design, but this is the way it ended up turning out. And no surprise at all that the original P12 is sailing well below because it is much more RPM limited. But how do they compare against other fans I've tested? Now this is not all the fans I've tested, but it is a subsample selection that uh, are kind of good fans, bad fans, and what I consider other fans kind of around uh, these fans that really make a lot of sense. So like we've got the Tough Fan 12 Pro with the plus sign, uh, we've got the T30 in here. We have the Unifan P28, which is one of the fans I recommend as a good all-rounder. So with that uh, blue-white diamond, and you can see we can see that the P28 is a noise normalized better than the fluid dynamic bearing of the P12 Max. Uh, other fans around it, 
We've got the Wonder Tornado on here, another 3000 RPM fan, very similar results overall for that. And when we crank things up to 100% PWM fan signaling, well, things change up a little bit. They get shaken around, if you uh, per se. Uh, the P28 is sitting right there. That's why I labeled it as a diamond, because the coloring is similar to other fans, where it does better at shorter throw distances, but as the case gets bigger, it's not nearly as good as the P12 Max is. Uh, the only fans that are doing really significantly well are like the TLB12 Extreme. And the triangle is the P12 Max dual ball bearing sitting right up to, at the top. We've got the Grand Tornado sitting right there. It just kind of falls apart right at the end at the absolute biggest cases. So these are other fans that are just kind of sitting up around it. And then noise-wise, here they are sitting right there. And we have the TLK12, which was just a good fan overall, and I really bumped up its box size so that it would stand out against uh, the P12 Max White Edition. So it does well, but it's uh, not nearly as good at higher RPMs, but at lower ones, it's keeping up quite nicely. So I call it good, but not great, not top tier. And during this weekend, I have three videos in sequence. So I've got the P14 Max, the P12 Max, and a Sone versus Decibels. So I'm considering uh, changing the way I do analysis uh, going forward. So I, I have a bunch of old pre-recorded, -pre not edited yet videos. They're going to be in whatever format that they're currently in. But going forward, newer newer videos will be either in Decibels or in Sone, whichever one uh, you prefer. So here are decibels. There's the way sewn look. And again, it's the exact same data. It's just which one do you prefer? And I'm going to have a video on my channel describing what sewn is and how it's calculated and how it differs from decibels so that you all can make a good valid decision. I'm not going to go into it in this video what the difference is because it will just make this one too long. Next up, we have airspeed to my CPU air cooler. It's the Noctua U12A. On the left side here, we have airspeed meters per second versus RPM. This is a blade efficiency graph. It is how good is this blade design at pushing air through a CPU air cooler. And long story short, it is very effective, especially going to my control fan, lining up very closely. And matter of fact, the FDB and the dual wall bearing lining up very similarly as well, which makes a lot of sense. And then on the right side, we have decibels versus airspeed. Decibels are the horizontal, airspeed is the vertical. So it's how noisy is it at doing its particular job? Well, we can see that the FDB and the dual ball bearing line up very, very closely, which is great to see. We, we that's, that's what we want to see. The fluid dynamic bearing should be quieter. And once again, for this videos, I have the decibels versus the zone. You tell me which one you prefer. Please leave in the comment section. And I'm also going to have a, um, a uh, voting thing up on the channel so you can vote and tell me which type of graph you think looks better because uh, I want to present the data in the way that you all like the best. I'm going to iterate that probably a few more times in this video. Uh, anyways, comparing a bunch of the fans together, this is a larger subsample selection. Uh, so we got the P12 Max White Edition sitting right there at the top, noise normalized results with only a few fans being superior to it. So that is a great result from this one. Matter of fact, the dual ball bearing is way towards the bottom. So there's that. I may have gotten a um, lemon, but um, it, it is what it is with the testing. I would like to expand my capability. And when we crank things up to 100% PW fan signaling, well, the FDB is crushing it. It is better than the dual ball bearing here although I'll be at a little bit higher noise level. And we got the other fans listed. So like the TLB12 Extreme sits right up there, the P12 or the Unifan P28, which for whatever reason I particularly like, although it's fairly expensive, but it does have a better noise value, but you do lose a little bit of performance at that top end. We got the Apex Stealth sitting up here, Grand Tornado and a bunch of other really top tier fans. And if we go down a little bit, 
there is the A12, um, A12X25. So, you know, that's, what, what do we call it? The, like, uh, the go-to fan to compare everything against. All right, then we have the decibels versus air speed for going through the CBR cooler, comparing a bunch of these fans together, and I've tried to create some uh, labels on it. Uh, I didn't quite get the shapes on this one. I do apologize for that. But I think I got the couple color combinations that should make it distinct enough. Tell me if they're not good enough on this one. I, again, apologize. I thought I had gotten it up in all the shapes that uh, we saw on the other one. A couple other graphs. Anyways, here's the P12 Max White Edition. It's sitting right towards the top, but it just doesn't quite have the same top end as some of the other ones where they tend to leave it behind just by a little bit. Like this one is the P28. It just is lacking that higher RPM to basically make it to the finish line against some of the other top tier ones. And the dual ball bearing does slightly better than it. Then the white edition at that upper echelon of speed, but uh, the, the FDB one has the better performance in the end, albeit at that slightly higher noise level. And once again, we got the zone versus decibels. I'll flick back and forth a few times and once again, tell me which one you all prefer. All right, quick overview of the Arctic P12 Max. And finally, this is an FDB version, Fluid Dynamic Bearing. They just put a little sticker of it uh, where it had a dual wall bearing. So apparently this is just like revision four. Maybe it's less than that, maybe it's more than that. I'm not entirely sure. But I got it in white because why not? That way my reviews make a little bit more sense. Basically the fan looks exactly like the previous one straight struts in the back actually that's kind of interesting i also took a look at the p14 at the same time the p14 has these curved struts despite a very similar looking blade design just obviously beefed up a little bit so the the blades on it are nice and thick they've got this great sweep angle to them getting narrow in the middle and of course it's got the ring on the outside the gap around the outside is not the best but it is pretty good to get that even narrower, narrower they need to use fancy materials such as liquid crystal, crystal polymer, LCP, which of course would drive up the cost of this fan. So they've done an excellent job, especially considering the price, and the move to a fluid dynamic bearing should help with noise profiles, particularly at lower RPMs, which I do believe I saw in my testing. Uh, the strut design is very good, uh, just an angle triangle, and I'm perfectly happy with that integrated rubber pads, and there's not much else to write home about. Um, overall, very impressive blade and fan design, especially considering its overall price tag. So uh, let's get this moving. All right, now we're taking a look at CFM, cubic feet per minute, and uh, very much the same as going to the CPU curler. Uh, left side is blade efficiency, right side is noise for that airspeed, uh, noise efficiency, so I'm not going to talk through it. it they're uh, doing pretty well overall. And the zone versus decibels, again, I'm not going to really talk through it. And then comparing the subsample selection against a bunch of the other fans I've got, the FDB is doing, once again, significantly better. The dual ball bearing at noise normal results, and when we crank it up to 100% PW fine signaling, well, the dual ball bearing is better than the FDB one and at a lower, lower noise value. So it's kind of rock, paper, scissors, shoot, what you're going to get. With the P28 sitting right there at the top along with it. Mind, if you're looking for the tippy top and for performance, the T30 is still sitting right there. And then we got CFM versus decibels, decibels horizontal, CFM vertical. And it's sitting, the FDB uh, P12 Max sitting kind of lower middle. It's doing quite well overall compared to other fans. All right, last but not least is the value proposition. So when I purchased this fan, it was $14.50, more expensive than the dual ball bearing uh, black edition of the P12 Max, which hurts its value proposition overall. But surprisingly, it does better in noise normalized results compared to the dual ball bearing one because it is so much better than it. Again, don't know if I got a lemon or whatever, so that that could change the way you look at the results. But either way, it's not a top value pick 
for Norris normalized, a Norris normalized fan. If that performance level is enough for you, there are better picks. But if you need that top level performance, I do apologize, this isn't scaled um, uh, best to worst. Just the graph was not working properly. The FDB is better, but the dual ball bearing is even better than it. And there are other fans that are just much better value than it. Now, I do want to note again that uh, value proposition is performance per dollar. It is not raw performance. So a fan that is cheap enough, even if it has crap performance, could still be ranked best in value because it would be so cheap. So do pay attention to the other graphs and not just buy a fan because it's got good value. Make sure it's hitting that performance metric that you actually need it to. Uh, the 11 inch mark, the white edition kind of sitting in the upper middle, but it's not hitting that top tier mark. At the 11 inch mark, upper middle once again, but not quite hitting that top tier mark once again. And CFM testing, Kind of the same thing going on but here it's actually shifted well towards the top in terms of its uh, value proposition at 100% PW fan signaling and as a cooler fan through my cpu air cooler uh it's in the tupper upper fans definitely in that value proposition noise normalized but really why you'd be getting is for that 100% PW fan signaling where it's sitting well 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 right at the tippy top it's not the absolute best value proposition, but it's sitting high enough that I'd give it a general recommendation here. So where does it leave me with this fan? Well, overall, I feel like uh, the P12 Max would kind of get my stamp of approval of being, it looks like a good fan, looks like it should work as a good all-rounder for anywhere in your, in your computer case, assuming you're happy with its the noise levels that it generates. I saw no significant harmonic or resonant frequencies within it. Um, it didn't really have any annoying, annoying sounds. So overall, I think it's a fine fan for general use computer cases. Then my main issue is that for whatever reason, the white, it, I don't know if it, when I purchased it was the white edition uh, because the black wasn't available. So I couldn't um, check that against it. And the black was actually still listed as a dual ball bearing. And I wanted the FDB. If the FDB one is going to be more expensive or whatever. So hopefully they get that price down to more like that $13 mark, then it would get a much stronger recommendation from me. Um, if you got suggestions for other fans you want me to take a look at or video ideas, please go ahead and leave those in the comment section down below. Uh, think about becoming a Patreon or a YouTube member. That um, money goes directly into funding this channel to make this testing possible and help with future growth so that I can acquire much better testing equipment to basically get the best data possible for all of you. Uh, other than that, hitting that subscribe button, hitting the like button really go a long way in um, helping advertise the channel, tell your friends, whatever. If you got suggestions on ways that I can improve the video format, I'm always trying to improve it. Uh, and I almost forgot, here is the raw data. I'll leave it up for a couple seconds and I'll see you next time.